the 58-year-old lady incidentally found to have an occluded celiac artery and an aneurysm of the anterior division of the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. We initially <clears throat> did biplanar fusion, which allowed us to actually uh, create a guide for the entrance to the inferior pancreatic adrenal artery off the sphere mesenteric artery. To access sphere mesenteric artery, we used a combination of a tour guide and a burn. And you can see we actually catheterized the uh, target uh, branch basically fairly easily at this point using an O35 system. We actually wanted to get better delineation of the inflow and outflow vessels, so we did opt to do a uh, cone beam CT. And you'll see uh, the exquisite pictures that we can actually get from this. And so these are the kind of pictures that you can derive. We're, of course, injecting directly into the sphere mesenteric artery to get these pictures. Uh, although we were confident that the posterior division looked fairly large, we really did not want to sacrifice the anterior division, you know, if at all possible. And that was one of the reasons uh, that we took the approach uh, that we did. And many of the techniques we're going to be, uh, which you're going to see here are actually uh, derived for treating intracranial aneurysms. And we did involve Dr. Lando Diaz, who's one of our interventional neuroradiologists in the planning and the execution of this. And you'll see that was incredibly valuable. So what we've done is um, delineate the path. Uh, the reason it's not completely aligned is because there's significant rest between motion in this area. But it certainly shows you that you're actually in and to the target vessel. The plan here was to uh, place uh, two wires, one distally in the uh, anterior division of the, the pancreatic or duodenal artery, beyond the aneurysm, and this place the second into the aneurysm itself. In other words, um, we were going to use a dual wire technique, and we'll show you shortly the way that this is actually, uh, we, we, we actually set this up. On the end of the catheter, we had a double to a bore system, so the two wires exit either end of it. We've put a list in here, but because there's a number of devices you may not be familiar with, there's another list really at the end of this procedure. And what we're doing now is to uh, pass these wires into the aneurysm and beyond the aneurysm. Now, there are a couple of techniques which you can use. One is to, uh, of course, put the stent in and to trap the wire inside the aneurysm. The concern here was because the aneurysm was the outer aspect of the uh, the curve really felt that the stent would just prolapse into the aneurysm. And so we used what are called framing coils really to start off uh, packing the aneurysm. The idea being that once you've got the aneurysm packed, that the packing itself will provide support uh, for delivery of the stent. Remember, we do have a safety wire which trails beyond uh, the, the aneurysm uh, itself into the distal uh, anterior division of the fear pancreatic or duodenal artery. And you can see it's, it's a fairly large artery, actually. So once we get these two wires in position, um, we then started uh, packing. Uh, you can see this one more time, packing inside the aneurysm with a coil. And you can see how much rest between motion there actually is. And we used to see, uh, frequently used road mapping to subtract out the previously placed coils. Because once you start packing, it becomes difficult to see where the new coils are actually going. But again, because you've got the safety wire distally, you can be fairly aggressive in actually packing, uh, packing the aneurysm. And so again, numerous different coils were actually utilized uh, in this situation. As you place a coil, if need be, repeat the angiogram, uh, place more coils. And again, you still have the option once the stent is in place to uh, put more coils in, but we needed that support uh, to get the stent uh, around the corner. Another option, of course, would have been to try and recanalize the celiac artery and, um, and then take care of this. Uh, but we opted to, to go this route, first of all. And you can see the significant respiratory motion that's actually occurring. In fact, a lot of the time when we were deploying these coils, we actually had the anesthesiologist hold the breathing in the same phase as we shot that arteriogram, so uh, full inspiration, for example, or full expiration, so that the uh, you get the alignment of the coil pack with the um, with the, the the angiogram that we've shot in the background. And again, using subtraction, you can see more coils coming in, or placed in time to place the stent. So the stent was placed um, once we had adequate packing you know, of these coils. And here you can see the coil 
Um, and this is actually the stent that's going on. The stent is actually delivered through a microcatheter. And so you have to place a stent fairly far beyond. It's called the LSIV stent. It is a bit like the uh, flow retriever. Um, and now it's actually being deployed. Again, designed for intracranial angles where you don't really want to sacrifice the native circulation. You can see that the stand has been deployed. Very difficult to see, actually. We have a special program on our Fluoro system that allows you to um, highlight the devices, and it's very useful to actually see it. And there's a, um, but a, a stent is trackable, deliverable through a microcatheter, and soft. So now the stent's been. Now you can see the the stent. And you can see that we've retained flow through, we're injecting now directly into that anterior division. And you see we've still got flow there, it's nice. And then one more coil was actually placed just to pack it a little bit more. Obviously it's always the last coil that gets you in trouble. And this one actually trailed alongside the stand a little bit, but uh, not badly. So we did a completion cone beam CT. You can see coil packing is beautiful. That's the cone beam being done. It allows us to fuse these together. And we've got anti-grade flow. It continues to flow anti-grade up into the hepatic artery. And you can see this is the, the, the pre-reconstruction on cone beam CT, what it looked like. And then, of course, once we've uh, packed it, we can get another idea, basically, of uh, just how accurate the packing has been and this allows things to be very accurate indeed. So, and then you know, it's important, one of the advantages of doing combi even before you start is it lets you lay out the angles and so you know exactly where the inflow and outflow vessels are. This is um, what this uh, LSIV stent looks like. The typical technique is you actually uh, place the, the stent first of all And then you pack, it's not, as I say, what we did. This is an alternate technique which can be utilized. The concern was the, um, the stent prolapsing into the aneurysm itself. So this is how we opted to do it. And actually worked, I'm gonna say, it worked remarkably well. So just to kind of recap, once again, you've got the uh, tour guide. Through that, we had the, uh, I think it's called the Navion support catheter. And again, we'll show you that at the end. The pathway is nicely delineated using the fused images. Coils were placed first, followed by that LSIV stent. Just kind of recapping what we did here. The Freeman coils being placed. Freeman coil is one which kind of forms almost like a cube. Uh, allows to sit inside the aneurysm and then you actually pack inside the frame of the previously placed coils. Coils being packed. Coils placed during full expiration. And then once you're satisfied with the coil support, you actually then bring in the stent. And that is the stent LVIS device. It's not something you post dilate, you just uh, lay this in. It's delivered through a microcatheter. It shows you what the microcatheter compatibilities are up here. Uh, this was about a month later. Shows the aneurysm is secluded. It's still intact. 
And um, if you lay these in side by side, you can you can see what the approach pathway was. We've lost that um, uh, filling of the aneurysm, but the division, uh, the anterior division, is still intact. And here's the products that we used during this case. Okay.